Welcome back folks, my name's Shane. In today's video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about this Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 contemporary lens for micro four thirds. Now, unfortunately, th I think this lens has been discontinued. So I picked one of these up off eBay and I've been shooting with it for the last few days. Now, while I have had this for a couple of weeks now, I did plan on taking it overseas, but I'm not going to. So I'll feature this in a full review coming up when I get back, but it's a great little lens. And I just wanted to share with you some footage I shot with it on the G9 Mark II. Now, when I first did my reveal of this lens, I shot using the GH7 here in the studio, and it was great. If you missed that, I'll link it down in the description box. But this particular lens gives you excellent image quality. There's a few things that you need to know about it. And again, this is more of a first impressions video of this lens, but we'll talk more about some of its pros and cons a little bit later. So let's take a look at some sample footage. I wanted to shoot a little bit of the mundane or everyday stuff. This isn't a fully produced video or anything like that. So what you're about to see is just some sample shots here out at the lake, shooting with the G9 Mark II, and I hope you enjoy this video. While the Sigma 16mm f1.4 is not optically stabilized, it doesn't much matter anymore. The G9 Mark II and GH7 both have the new e-stabilization and awesome in-body image stabilization, so there's no need even for a gimbal. One of the great things about the Sigma lens is you can get up nice and close to your subject and blur the background out quite a lot. It's not too blurry though, so it's the equivalent of f2.8 full frame. So if you're looking for a full frame look on a micro four third sensor body, this is a really great choice. Let's talk about the shooting experience with the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4. Now the autofocus performance on this is fine. I really like slowing down the speed of the autofocus performance with this lens to minus two. It just sort of gives you a nice sort of cinematic pull, very similar to how my Sony FX3 pulled focus. So in terms of its autofocus motors with the new PDAF system of the G9 Mark II or GH7, it works extremely well. With the exception of about one or two shots, everything you saw in this video was shot using autofocus, just either in the one area mode or the human detection mode when Rhiannon was in the shot. So yeah, it works extremely well. Now, if you notice some flaring in that footage, I was shooting with a circular polarizer, which really brought out the blues in the sky and also just dropped the overall exposure. Now, all of that was shot in aperture priority mode. <laughs> the way I shoot for YouTube outside of the studio, it's just nice and efficient and the camera pretty much manages the exposure. So I had no problems there whatsoever. You probably noticed some flaring and that was definitely because of this circular polarizer. It's an extra layer of glass here that just sort of cuts out all the you know the polarized light in the sky basically so it does a really great job at doing that now there's a few things about this lens i've noticed already one it's got an awesome minimum focusing distance but if you do plan on shooting an f1.4 especially in a high contrast situation you're going to notice some chromatic aberration i noticed this in video and this would be the same if you plan on shooting photographs so there's definitely a bit of chromatic aberration with this but again i don't consider this to be a deal breaker because it is f1.4. The chroma was more evident anytime I was up close than it was just in general shooting scenarios. So I would have no problems using this at f1.4, but just pick and choose the right situation for the job. Again, if you're up close to something, this is where I noticed it the most. And while the autofocus performance on this lens is excellent, there's a couple of things I've noticed already. One, this lens isn't at all compatible with the linear focusing options found in the camera body, which kind of sucks. I would love to see that updated so it supports the Sigma glass. There's so many people using Sigma lenses, so if Panasonic can make that happen, that would be awesome. Secondly, it's really easy to turn the focus ring too far, being that it's focused by wire. So if we do get that linear focusing option at some point, that would be great. But I just don't see it happening now, being that this is such an old lens. But the great news is, with the new camera bodies, just go back to autofocus, <laughs> it works. So I guess the takeaway here is that the autofocus is so good now. And if you set up a one area box mode or using human detection, you probably won't even need to be turning this ring a whole lot unless you're doing something with intention with manual focus. But yeah, the manual focus experience definitely isn't as good as native lenses in terms of Lumix ones. Now, if you're on the fence between the Sigma and the Panasonic Leica lens, the Panasonic Leica lens is better for photographers. It's smaller, it's lighter. It is f1.7 versus f1.4, but it's a great little lens, but the video autofocus, at least in my tests, aren't anywhere near as good as the Sigma. So if you're a video shooter, I would highly recommend checking out this Sigma lens. It's definitely a great match for some of the new camera bodies. Now, if you're a GH7 shooter, 
The image quality will be every bit as good or the same as what you've seen in this video as well. And it's great that this new autofocus system breathes new life into some of these lenses. Now, Micro Four Thirds is so good because you can find so many great used lenses on the market at a fraction of the price that they would cost new. And that's how I ended up getting this. Now, for those wondering, I've decided to bring full frame over to my trip to Hawaii. If you missed that video, I'll link it down below. I'm gonna leave in a day from now. So I'm about to go as of shooting this video, but I'm then going to Perth in Western Australia in January. So I'm gonna be taking Micro Four Thirds for that trip exclusively. So stay tuned for that if you are a Micro Four Thirds shooter. Let us know what you think of the Sigma. And again, this isn't a full review. I just wanted to share some sample footage with you shot on the G9 Mark II. Thanks for watching. Catch you soon. See ya.